My name is Troy Wheeler and I'm from Meatsmith in Melbourne. And today we're going to break down a whole side of beef. Here we have the chuck. What we're going to do with the chuck is we're going to remove the neck bone, which will expose the chuck primal. We will break it down into some other cuts, some subprimals, uh, some interesting grilling cuts, as well as some brazing cuts. From here, we'll start to remove the outer bark, which is a small membrane of muscle that lives on the outside of the neck. Here is full of glands and some small fat pockets that help make up the neck part. Turn it over removing a muscle that sits on the edge of the vertebrae. We're basically going to trace around the neck bone. Traditionally, butchers would bone out each individual vertebrae to keep as much meat as possible, aside for things like trim for sausages, for mincing. More commonly these days, we bone them straight around the, the bone because a lot of people use them for broths and soups and stocks. So just tracing around the outside, the edge of the atlas bone, continuing to trace around. So it's exposed and then working from the underside. Until it's removed. So here you have the major primer, which is the, the chuck. Uh, the chuck bone, which can be used for soup, stocks and broths. A small muscle that sits on the inside of the vertebrae and then some trimming. From here, there's a heavy, large piece of sinew that is located on the top. So from here, we would trim any of the small blood clots, heavy sinew and cartilage for us to be used into mincing. Small trimming bits that are left on this heavy bit of sinew which is also known as the paddywhack. We'll remove the rest of the blood clots. Removing any of this large pieces of fat. Trim. From here, we're gonna turn this into three different muscle groups. We'll cut the very first part of the neck off and leave that as a traditional piece of chuck, perfect for brazing. On the very top, there is a chuck eye, which is essentially the extension of your scotch fillet. So sliced quite thinly and pan fried. It's really very, very flavoursome, interesting steak. You'll see that there's a few other smaller muscles that exist in between there, which is perfect for things like burgers, uh, ragouts, braises. And there's another smaller muscle that you can see that is like a plate just here, uh, which is also a fantastic grilling steak. So removing that. And trimming it up with any sinew and fat. And the other plate from the other side will also fall into trimming. Here we have a prime rib or a ribeye closest to the, we have three ribs within the chuck end and then four to five ribs within the, the loin end. So basically we're removing the remainder of the cap from the outside, we're following the seam just to leave a small film of fat covering that eye. As you move down, you get further towards the end of the vertebrae and the feather bones to remove the rib cap. And then there's another smaller cap on the outside, which we'll remove also. to the inside of that rib cap. Basically just tidying it up a little bit. Each prime rib will be sliced between each bone. Uh, each bone will have a slight turn. From here, we'll mark between each vertebrae with the saw. 
just breaking that bone on the chine bone. And we'll do this for each individual stake. And what you'll see is that once you've marked the bone, you can slice straight through, giving you an unfrenched ribeye. For the last remainder bit, we'll bone out so that you get a small piece of scotch fillet. Just by tracing around those rib bones to the feather bone. Just remove a small piece of scotch. There's a heavy piece of sinew, which is the same bit of sinew that continues along from the paddywhack, also runs along there. There we go. This piece is a shortcut argy. What we're going to be working on is we're removing the tenderloin or the fillet, which is located on the inside of the pelvis bone. We're going to work on the rump, which is consisted of the rump cap, rump eye, rump center, and tri-tip. As we come through, we've got this inside body skirt, which is also known as the bavette. And then underneath is the sirloin, and then we'll get a three rib prime rib off the end. Starting on the skirt, we'll remove this piece of the bavette. Also known as a sirloin skirt or sirloin tip. So there's just a small film of muscle that sits on the top. We'll just remove that. Give us the bavette. From here, we'll remove the, the tenderloin or the fillet. Just by cutting around the inside of the pelvis bone, just to expose the muscle. Tracing along the vertebrae, and moving it away from the bone. Removing the fillet. The fillet will go through and trim away any of the fat. You see this fat that is built up here and lives on the edge of the fillet. Uh, is, called, is where your suet is from, and the suet is the fat that encases the kidney. Let's go through and trim the outside. Moving any of the excess silver skin and fat. This piece is known as the, the chain on the fillet. This is also a very good secondary grilling cut not commonly used. From here, we'll just remove this silver skin and any of the large buildup of fat. Give you a fillet. Continue working on the larger piece, where we'll separate the, the rump from the loin. There's a, a pelvis bone, which is known, known as the H bone, is located here. And we, we're going to work through the first vertebrae to the bottom of the H-bone to separate the loin from the rump. So identifying where the vertebrae is, the bottom of the rump, slicing through. It becomes the rump. And the sirloin on the bone. So from here we'll separate the three ribs identifying that vertebrae again, and to the last rib. Gives us a three rib standing roast. From here, we've got our sirloin or our porterhouse, removing that tail, which gives us the, the sirloin tail. And from here, we're identifying where that vertebrae bones are just to remove our sirloin off the bone. Here we have our porterhouse and the vertebrae bone. We'll now remove the H bone from the rump. From here, 
sticking to the bone. To remove that H bone, give us our boneless rump. Some small trimming of sirloin that's located in the, within that first vertebrae. From here we break down the rump, some smaller muscle groups. Here is a part of the, the first cut of the knuckle that comes off the butt of beef. Just removing that. And start working towards breaking down the rest of the rump. Removing, there's a pocket of fat that sits on top of the tri-tip, which is the tail of the rump. Here on top of the rump, there's some uh, the trimming, which is a small little skirt type stake that is located on the top of the rump that helps keep the H bone attached to the rump. From here, as we move further in, you have smaller muscles like this little piece, which is a rump pillow or rump flap. This is a very, very delicious little great grilling cut. Starting to remove the tri-tip. Now we'll move into moving the major muscle group, which is the, the rump setter, which is also separated into the, the rump eye and the roast beef. Moving that large muscle. Trimming up the rump cap to remove any of that excess fat. Just give you the rump cap. And separating the rump, you'll see that there's a, a line of sinew that is located here to separate these two major muscles. Just working from the front. Identifying where those muscle groups connect. Give you the rump eye. Just removing its sinew to give you the rump center. This is what makes up a shortcut RG. Here we have the butt of beef. So the butt of beef consists of uh, the knuckle, or known as the round, which is on the outside have the top side, which is located here. We have a small muscle that sits inside the, the rest of the H bone and that pelvis bone, which is known as the spider stake. And here we have where the Jarello will run. Here is the outside flat, or also known as silver side. In here is the, some gravy beef that's a part of the shin. And then we have the shin. The shin is where your osobuco comes from. Inside that is two major marrow bones. First off, we'll start by removing the round by locating where the kneecap is. So it's making a cut above where the, the joint, exposing the top of the marrow bone, the femur bone. So we're going to remove the knuckle by exposing the marrow bone, as you can see here. There we have the round or the knuckle. Next, I'll be removing the top side just by trying to find its seam, which is located at the top, which joins the, the shin and the jarello. And I'll follow that seam right down to the right down to the bone, which will also be the front side of the silver side.
So you have the top side, top side with the spider stake and that remainder of the H bone still attached. From here, we'll remove the silver side and the Jurello in one whole piece. Once it's removed, we'll remove the Jurello on the silver side from on top of the cutting block. From here we're left with the, the marrow bone and the shin. We'll just remove those, cutting through the joint. With the silver side and the Jurello, uh, we'll remove any of this trimming from the top, removing the gravy beef that is located on the inside of the, the Jurello and the silver side to give you those three muscles. Silver side, the Jurello, gravy beef, marrow bone. From here we'll remove the spider steak from the inside of the H bone and then remove the H bone and leave the top side. Here with the round or the knuckle, we'll separate this in two muscles. We'll be removing the cap that sits on top here, which is also the extension of the tri-tip, and having the outside of the knuckle and then the, the, the knuckle center, or the, the knuckle eye. Here we have the butt of beef. What we have here is the flank. So the, the flank consists of a few different types of skirt. Flank steak, which is the plate skirt. We have the body skirt and we have a little bit of inside skirt and then from there most of the other pieces is just for trimming. Here we'll start on the, the outside and we'll remove this bark which is a salvageable piece of meat used predominantly for sausage trim. Moving that large piece of fat. From here tracing down the edge and removing the, the heavy sinew. And this will allow us to pull the film of sinew that's located on top. And what I'm doing is just working through the layers and pulling out, pulling out the skirts as we move down through the, through the flank. Moving that film. Removing the bit of cartilage left from the end of those the rib sets. From here there's another small piece of inside body skirt which is the, the tip of where that bavette was. Now just going through and grading out trim that still can be used.
Just removing any of that heavy sinew. So here we have the flank. Here we have the whole brisket, bone in. What we'll get from this is two different types of skirt. We have the inside body skirt and the rest of the flank skirt. And then we have the navel end brisket and the point end brisket. First of all, I'll start by removing the skirt. Then we'll remove the bones and then separate out the two different types of brisket. Just removing the, the sinew that's like the film. Again, moving that membrane. From here, we'll just trace around the outside of where this bone is, and then we'll move it up onto its side and then remove the rest. So just moving around the outside, identifying where the bone is. Same again on the back side. Then moving up onto its side. We move against the bones. To remove the plate of bones that are sit on the top. From these bones, we will remove uh, the meat that lives in between each of the bones. We have the intercostal fingers and then the rib bone. From here you can see we have the, the meaty end of the brisket, which is the point end brisket, and here is the navel end of the brisket. Just going over the top and cleaning up the heavy fat and all of the blood clots from up around where the neck would be. And we're going to remove the plate of meat that lives on the top here, as you can see. Just some trimming. From here we separate the navel and the point. We just want to remove the, the top bit of fat from the point end bit of brisket just to expose all the lean part of the meat. Just trimming back the brisket, any excess fat. Just tidying this up a little bit. So here we have the brisket. Here we have a beef blade or a bone in shoulder blade. Uh, what we'll be getting off the beef blade is a chuck tender, which is a small fillet of beef that sits on the underside of the scapular bone. We have the petite tender, which sits on the top of the scapular bone. We have the oyster blade, which is on the underside. We have the bowler blade, which is on, on the, the back side. And around the clod bone, we have the clod meat. And at the end, we have the forequarter shin. First of all, we'll start by removing the petite tender off the top of the scapular bone, exposing that bone so we can then pull it out to expose the cuts underneath. Starting from the very top of the scapular bone where it joins, where it joins the clod and the cup joint. Just running the knife across the top. and removing the cut from the top.
From here, we'll trim out the, the petite tender. Just removing the silver skin and any excess trimmings. Here we have the trim, petite tender. Then from here, we're going to go back to work on the, the four quarter shin. Just removing the trim across the top. Any excess trimmings around the outside. From here, we'll work around the top of where the elbow is of the front leg. And we're going to work around through the cup of the clod bone joint. Chin is removed. From here, we'll trace around that clod bone, exposing all of the blade and then the clod meat. Just removing that bone. From here we'll clean it up a little bit. Removing all that clod trim. And we'll remove the rest of the cuts. So I'll start from the chuck tender side. Removing this eye muscle that's located on the underside of the scapula. From here, clean a bit of the meat off the top. Same thing, tracing around the outside. We'll turn it over to finish up the rest. Just tracing along the underside bone to remove that scapula bone. From here we have the bowler blade and the oyster blade which are joined together. So we're just separating those. So just following that line to remove the oyster blade. Trimming at the oyster blade, which you can also get flat iron out of oyster blade by removing the center sinew that turns the muscle into two muscle groups. And here we have the beef blade. <laughs>